At approximately the same time that Pavlov was conducting research to study what became known as classical conditioning, the psychologist Edward Thorndike, also studying the behavior of animals, was exploring what became known as operant conditioning. Through experiments in which he observed the behavior of cats trying to escape a puzzle box, Thorndike developed his law of effect, which states that the behavior that is succeeded by a satisfactory effect will be more likely to be repeated. Thorndike's law of effect basically says that we tend to repeat what yields a positive consequence. This is when conditioning stops yielding an involuntary response to produce a voluntary one. The cat does not follow rewards automatically. In a level, it knows what behavior will yield a positive response and acts voluntarily to seek the best outcome. Differently from classical conditioning, the action here makes sense. It's not a conditioning that is random, such as salivating after hearing a bell, but something that is understandable to us, such as being polite to our family to hear how they are proud of us instead of listening to a long speech of how ill-bred we are. For those who have not seen the videos of Pavlov and Watson regarding classical conditioning, the links are found in the description and are complements to the material that we are seeing here. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video to help the channel grow. The study of operant conditioning, also called instrumental conditioning, was further developed by B.F. Skinner in the 1930s based on Thorndike's work. Skinner described the learning mechanism in terms of reinforcement and punishment. In an experiment similar to Thorndike's puzzle box, he recorded the behavior of animals placed in a Skinner box. Following specific behaviors, the animals would be rewarded or punished. There were responses found in the study. The first one was a neutral operant, another term for response, in which the response from the environment neither increased or decreased the likelihood of behavior repetition. The second was reinforcers, in which the responses increased the likelihood of behavior repetition. The third, similarly, was punishers, in which the responses decreased the likelihood of behavior repetition. Reinforcement and punishment can be either positive or negative. These terms do not take the idea of good and bad, but of a stimulus being present or absent, respectively. What Skinner found clearly describes the term operant conditioning. One can add or remove stimuli in order to shape how animals behave by strengthening or weakening repetition of behavior. The simplest example is school. The teacher can give a student a compliment for doing the homework, positive reinforcement, or remove the assigned homework for doing the previous one, negative reinforcement. This is reinforcement because it seeks to strengthen behavior doing the homework. And in the first case, it is positive because it adds a reward, a compliment, while in the second case, it is negative because it removes a negative stimulus, the homework. On the other hand, the teacher can assign more homework to the student who did not do the previous one, positive punishment, or take away time from the student's break, negative punishment. It is punishment because it seeks to weaken behavior, not doing the homework, and it is positive and negative for the same reasons mentioned above. This technique is extensively used for manipulation purposes, which is the topic of the next video, behavior modification. I hope you enjoyed this one and see you in the next video.